Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Bristol Community College Nursing Class of 2017, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our honored guests, faculty, family, and friends. I am Josiah Monero, the nursing class president. At this time, I'd like to introduce my fellow class officers. Nursing class vice president, Peter Bertelli. And nursing class secretary, Joshua True. As well as our class representatives, traditional cohort curriculum and dialogue representative, Rachel Baxter. E-Health Cohort Curriculum Representative, Serena Gunderson. And E-Health Cohort Dialogue Representative, Jessica Henriks. You may all be seated. It is my privilege this evening to introduce the members of Bristol Community College's President's Council and Vice President's Council. Members of the President's Council with us this evening are President John J. Spraga, <laughs> Vice President for Academic Affairs and Chief Academic Officer Greg Satharas, <laughs> Vice President of College Communications Joyce Brennan, <laughs> Executive Vice President David Feeney, <laughs> Vice President of Instructional Research, Planning and Assessment, Rhonda Gabovich, <laughs> Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs, Anna Gallet, <laughs> Vice President of Administration and Finance, Steve Kenyon, Vice President of Resource Development, Elizabeth McCarthy. <laughs> Vice President of Resource Development, I'm so sorry, Dean of Grant Development, Jennifer Menard. <laughs> Former Senator of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Honorable Joanne Menard. Vice President of Preparedness, Compliance, and, Stu and Students, Steve Ozug. Mm -hmm. Vice President of Information Technology Services, Joanne Pelletier. Mm -hmm. Acting Vice President of Human Resources, Lisa Tarantino. Mm -hmm. Acting Vice President of Enrollment Services, Kathy to Torpy Garganta. <laughs> Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs, Anthony Ucci. <laughs> Acting Vice President of Workforce Development, Lifelong Learning, Grant Development, and External Affairs, Paul Vigent. <laughs> and Trustee, Diane Sylvia. Members of the Vice President's Council with us this evening are Associate Dean of Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics Initiatives, Megan Abella Bowen. <laughs> Dean of Business and Information Management, William Berardi. <laughs> Associate Dean of Health Sciences, Lynn Brodeur. <laughs> Director of Student Life, Kathleen Burns. Dean of the Attleboro Campus, Rodney Clark. <laughs> Dean of Academic Advising, Deborah Cohen. <laughs> Dean of the New Bedford Campus, James Daniels. <laughs> Dean of Health Sciences, Patricia Dent. <laughs> Dean of Access and Transition, Sarah Morrill. Associate Dean of Library Services, Robert Rez <laughs> Dean of Humanities and Education, Yuli Ryder. 
Director of the Taunton Campus, Gloria Sadler, and Dean of Mathematics, Science, and Eng Engineering, Sarmad Saman. It is my pleasure now to introduce the distinguished faculty and staff of the Bristol Community College Nursing Program. I ask that each of you please stand and remain standing as your name is called. Please hold the applause until all introductions have been made. Our department chair, Stephen Alves. Our full-time faculty, Donna Ayala, Renee Cardinal, Marilyn Crane, Geraldine Hamill, Andrea Matthews, Nancy Moxon, Donna Munzee, Melaine Perenzino, Sharon Perot, Kathleen Pilot, Kathleen Plant, Deborah Cuenga, and Patricia Shriver. Our adjunct faculty, Kathy Anonson, Kimberly Aguiar, Joyce Contois, Sherry Devignan, Vivian Demers, Lucille Force, Virginia Graziano, Deborah Levesque, Joan McCarthy, Christopher Paiva, Ryan Perry, and Sandra Waters, as well as our coordinator of learning resources for nursing, Mickey Pike, and Jacqueline Shook, Admin administrative support staff, Charlotte Medeiros, and Roxanne Ramos, as well as our academic tutors, Christine Bourgeois and Catherine Perry. Thank you all for your dedication and guidance over these last two years. Please be seated. Our invocation will now be delivered by Dr. Andrea Matthews. I ask that everyone please stand. Now the students get to see me squirm. So welcome everybody, class of 2017. So very patient families and friends, your prayers have been answered and I'll make this brief. It's very meaningful but brief. So students, we're proudly watched you complete this part of your journey and hopefully you finally believe what your esteemed faculty have been preaching. You belong here, you have many great deeds ahead. What is the priority nursing action after graduation? <laughs> after you celebrate. Uh, to do the greater good, uh, to make a difference and to attend to your work with integrity so that what you believe will be reflected in all that you do. Today is truly a day of thanksgiving for many reasons, right, family and friends? You have completed a very difficult challenge, and now you will be that nurse that will always be remembered. Students, how many times you were asked by a faculty member in clinical, what was the most meaningful interaction for you, for the patient, for the family? My clinical students are asked to tell me five things about their patients that I do not know. Sounds easy? Not so much. I love to talk to patients. But what the students learn through this is that talking to the patients, they learn to personalize them, and that they learned how to discover the person beyond the person lying in the bed. And they loved every minute of it, most of it. <laughs> so I saw miracles occur when my students cared for patients that were difficult, would come out, not come out of their rooms, were labeled demanding, depressed, and had given up. The transition was amazing, and I'm convinced that all these students that so proudly represent BCC were handpicked to be there in that moment of time. They made the difference, and it was amazing to observe. As you grew tired of hearing, you were exactly where you should be at exactly um, the right time, doing exactly what that patient needed. Do you think that was coincidence, or do you think you were destined to be that person? Patients and families will remember your presence, kindness, vulnerability, it's okay not to be perfect, and caring. Nursing is not just about the fun things, like giving injections to your patients, so that's a lot of fun, we admit it. <laughs> It's all about you, and I know you've never heard me say that before, it's always about the patient. <laughs> but now you're going to be nurses, and it is all about you. The very essence of who you are, that moment, a special moment in time that you entwine with someone in their most vulnerable state. You truly were chosen to be a nurse, and I'm not referring to the admissions office. You will become growingly intuitive, and my last lesson to you as a class is please listen to this inner voice. It is coming from the highest professor of all, Everybody wants to be the great nurse. Who wants to be a mediocre nurse or the nurse you don't want? Everybody wants to be that nurse. The best road to becoming that nurse is to always do what is right, advocate for others, pay it forward, 
and listening to your higher power, putting faith in all that is good. That is why you were chosen. May your hands, hearts, and minds always be gentle. May your God's almighty hand be upon you, uh, each of you every day, and bless your lives from this day forward with goodness and love. Stay true to your dreams, use your gifts wisely, and walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love. You're the best of the best. Best wishes, and God bless your journey. Thank you, Dr. Matthews. Everyone may now be seated. It is now my honor to invite President Spraga to the podium. Well, thank you and good evening. It's our honor to host this wonderful event and uh, welcome to Bristol Community College. I want to start by congratulating the graduates and uh, the wonderful work that they've done. I, I always tell them it's an it's a very difficult program to get into, but it's even more difficult to get out of uh, successfully. <laughs> and I thank you and I congratulate you for the great work that you've done. I know on your behalf, you'd want me to thank the faculty and the staff and all the people that helped you uh, at the college, as well as uh, outside of the college, your, uh, your uh, parents or uh, loved ones or support network, whoever it was that helped you. Uh, and you tried their patience, I'm sure, but they, they, you made it through. Um, I just quickly wanted to mention to you uh, something you didn't realize as you were moving through this curriculum, very rigorous curriculum, and that is the uh, role modeling that you've done. Uh, it wasn't the reason that you went to nursing or went to B Bristol Community College, but it is a side effect, uh, a serendipity of your attendance here at Bristol Community College. And start with, there are young ones here tonight They'll never forget this moment, and you've instilled in them the importance of education, and uh, how important it is to you will rub off on how it is how important it is to them. So I thank you for that. Also, uh, you didn't realize I don't think that you served as models for our other students uh, at BCC. They watch you form work groups and study groups and demand to be let into classrooms and labs extra time so you could study uh, and you, the, per, the seriousness of purpose that you demonstrated uh, it was certainly evident to all of our students. And in addition to your neighbors and people you don't even know who watch you in the rain and the snow and the heat uh, coming uh, with those books under your arm and coming to class and uh, working your way through when it was easier to go to the beach or uh, skiing or do something else. So I thank you for all you've done for Bristol We've benefited from your presence. And the very last thing I want to mention is that this is an age of lifelong learning. There's always something uh, to be learned. Uh, and uh, you are members of our BCC family. You're always welcome here. Any way we can help, you saw the dedication of our faculty and staff. And we remain ready to help you as you move through uh, life's journey. So congratulations. And uh, please keep up the good work. Wherever you go, you're flying BCC's flag. Thank you. Thank you, President Spraga. We will now hear a few words from Greg Sathares, Vice President for Academic Affairs and Chief, Chief Academic Officer. Thank you and welcome everybody on behalf of Academic Affairs, our amazing faculty, our deans who are, our faculty behind me, our deans who are out in the audience. Um, uh, thank you to everyone who's in the audience here to celebrate this night, but most importantly, congratulations to the graduates uh, on an amazing accomplishment. President Sprague talked about how difficult, how difficult it is to get through this program and I know that you have out in the audience, many family and loved ones who supported you, you would not be here without them. So my message to you tonight, as proud as you are of what you've accomplished so far, and you already know this, the, the route is not complete. And you already know that in this audience, on this stage, we have students who are already accepted into bachelor's programs, who are already accepted in to master's degree programs, and as they go, fo go forward with their education and their further development as professional nurses, they will continue to need your support and love to get them through. It's not just gonna be another two-year, four-year program. 
Education for a nurse means lifelong education, lifelong preparing yourself to give the best care to that patient. So many of the folks that are up here on stage with me not only will be achieving their bachelor's and their master's degree, but beyond. Many of them will go out into practice and, be, and get the DNP, the Doctor of Nursing Practice. I certainly hope that a number of them will go on and get their PhD in nursing. Maybe consider come back and teach here at BCC when you do that. Uh, but they will need your support throughout all of it, and I know that they will have it. So congratulations to everyone in the audience, and please also, most importantly to you, uh, the mission's not done. There's a lot left to do, but I know you're going to do it, and I know that you are going to be spectacular nursing professionals out there. Congratulations to all. Thank you, Dr. Satharas. I would now like to invite Patricia Dent, Dean of the Health Sciences, to the podium. On behalf of Associate Dean Broder and myself, I'd like to welcome everyone here to this pinning ceremony. Just a short couple of years ago, nursing graduates, you attended the new nursing student program orientation meeting. And I am sure that probably a few of you left a little bit in shock. And you also might have heard me say somewhere on the line, just remember, this is not about you. <laughs> it's all about the patients that will be entrusted in your care. There will be one night that is all about you, and that is tonight, your <laughs> pinning ceremony. <laughs> this is the ceremony that marks your important transition to a nursing professional, an individual who is always at the top list of every trusted professional year after year. You have worked long and hard and made many sacrifices along the way. And it is appropriate that you should celebrate with your family and friends who encouraged you through their words and actions and with your dedicated faculty who exemplify quality professional care, compassion, and expertise that define nursing and who have worked tires tirelessly and to share this passion with you. And also, there is Charlotte, who keeps us all organized. And moving forward, everyone in this auditorium tonight deserves a huge round of applause for a job well done. Tonight, graduates, you will be presented with a lamp, a symbol that honors and recognizes Florence Nightingale for her courage, care, and compassion for the ill and the injured. Yours, indeed, is a privileged profession. Entrusted to your care will be the frailest of newborns and the elder whose earthly journey is ending. There will be days that you will be so tired, you think, I can't possibly answer that call button one more time. Really, that patient is calling me again? <laughs> On those days, remember your call as a nurse and remember this privilege. Know that your expertise in nursing care and your comforting touch will make an immeasurable difference in the healing process. 
As you receive your lamp and recite the nursing pledge, you will accept this awesome obligation. I thank you for your commitment. May your career be long. May you take time for self-care and play. May your learning never stop. And may your joy in the service of others continue to grow exponentially. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you, Dean Dent. We will now hear a few words from Professor Stephen Alves, Nursing Department Chair. Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming to share this wonderful pinning ceremony with our graduates. I would like to start off by first thanking several people. I would like to thank our class officers and faculty advisors um, of, of the pinning ceremony for all the hard work they've done in putting together this wonderful event. Uh, the students took time out of their busy schedules, testing, clinical, community service learning projects. They were busy this semester, and the faculty was busy, but they went over and above to put together this wonderful ceremony, so I want to thank them for that. Um, I also would like to uh, thank the uh, Board of Trustees, uh, the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Greg Satharis, and the President's Council and Vice President's Council for their continued support of our nursing program. We couldn't do it without you all, so thank you again very much. <laughs> to also to uh, Lynn Broder, our Associate Dean for Health Sciences, what can I say except a big thank you for all your support this year? Thank you. And I would also be remiss if I did not take a moment to thank Charlotte Medeiros and, Rox and Roxanne Ramos for everything they do to assist the students as well as the faculty and myself. Thank you. Thank you for answering my, my many, many questions I had this year, so thank you, and they were a lot. To the nursing faculty, both full-time and adjunct, you're simply the best. Um, you go over and above in providing the best education and support for our students. Thank you so much for all you do. <laughs> Finally, there are two people who I, want, who I wanted to say for last in expressing my sincere appreciation. Patricia Dent, Dean for Health Sciences, and President John Sprager. As you might have already heard through the grapevine, that um, Dean Dent and Professor Sprager will be retiring this summer after uh, many dedicated years of service to the college and our nursing program. On behalf of the nursing faculty, staff, and students, I want to thank you both and let you know, you both know, how grateful we are for your support you've given to our program. Um, I would like to take a you know, moment to have us all wish them well on their retirement. They will be missed. Now, I want to say a few words to the nursing graduates. I didn't forget you folks. Um, and this seems to be the running theme of the night, but, and, I, and trust me, Dean Dent and Dr. Matthews and I did not get together and combine our speeches, but um, what I wanted to say to you is, and you've heard me say this in clinical, where it's not about you, it's about your patients. But again, I would concur with Dean Dent tonight, it is about you. Um, you have worked um, very hard these past two years um, in your academics and clinical, um, and we are very proud of you. I want you to think back to day one of the nursing program. Remember how you felt back then? Okay. It seemed like there was an insurmountable amount of facts to learn. You had a new classroom full of strangers that you had to get to know and work with, and many new skills to master. Once you began to feel comfortable in practicing these newly acquired skills in the safety of the skills lab, your faculty had the nerve to take you out into clinical and you had to practice these skills on real patients. Remember that day? The fear? 
Um, remember thinking when your instructor approached you and you were thinking, I have to do what? I have to take vital signs on a real patient? All of, the, all of these new skills you had to master, but you did it and you did it well. In addition to just mastering specific skills over the course of your time here at BCC, you all developed critical thinking skills as you learned to apply the content and concepts you learned in the classroom to care for your assigned patients in the clinical area. Through your work in developing individualized nursing care plans, which I know you will miss doing terribly, <laughs> you learned to apply the nursing process and evidence-based practice concepts to the care of your patients across the lifespan. So, class of 2017, while you may have thought this day would never arrive, here you are. After tonight, your lives will never be the same. You are entering a rewarding profession that will give you as much as you give to it. As you go forward in your career, always remember the awesome privilege you will have in making a difference in patients' lives. You will be there at the happiest times of their lives, such as at the birth of a new, of a new baby, and you will also be there holding the hand of your patient as they take their last breath. You will ease their physical pain as well as their emotional and psychological distress and discomfort. You will make a difference in patients' lives in ways you may not even remember or be aware of. Someday, you may meet someone out in the street and they will say to you, you took care of me or you took care of my mother or my father and I just want to thank you for all you did for me, for him, for her. These are the rewards you will experience in this profession. Remember that with this privilege comes a tremendous responsibility. You will have their lives in your hands. Remember, you are the patient's advocate. Use your knowledge, critical thinking, and assessment skills to always provide the highest quality care to your patients. Always remember that while tonight is a celebration, it is certainly not an end to your education. Whether, you, whether or not you pursue higher, uh, a higher degree, which I hope you do, you must always seek to improve yourself through continuing education. Your patients deserve this, and you deserve this for yourselves. So as I said tonight, however, this is about you and your wonderful accomplishments. You deserve to take a moment and take, take this um, all in, pat yourselves on the back, and say, I did this, because you did. Tonight, celebrate, but not too much. <laughs> so, class of 2017, on behalf of the faculty, I want to welcome you to the nursing profession. I am also very excited to welcome you as fellow BCC nursing alumni. Um, I just have to say also that I am, I'm thrilled we have many faculty um, that are BCC graduates. Actually, if the nursing faculty that are graduates, could you please stand for a minute? We have several of them. And I also want to take a moment, too, to, to say that in the audience uh, is the nursing program director when I got my pin 32 years ago, Ms. Ruth Hurley. Thank you so much for being here for the students. So tomorrow, graduates, or maybe the day after tomorrow, there'll be time to think about getting through your last hurdle on your way to becoming an RN, your NCLEX exam, which I know you will be well prepared for. So congratulations and warmest wishes always from the faculty. Thank you, Pro Professor Alves. Every year, generous members of our community contribute scholarships that provide support to our nursing students and recognize them for their academic and clinical achievements. Presenting the following scholarships is Dr. Kathleen Plant. Good evening, everyone. If I could take a minute just to acknowledge a student, a graduating student, who has been chosen as the class valedictorian of the 2017 commencement this year. And she's a nursing student, Tracy Cooley. She 
going to do our class proud. <laughs> it's my pleasure to announce the following scholarships and the student recipients. These students have demonstrated academic excellence, scholastic merit, or academic achievement in their first year in the nursing program. The first scholarship is the August I. Ryer PhD Memorial Scholarship, and the student recipient is Julia Pyers. The next scholarship is the Christopher J. Dickey Memorial Scholarship, and the student recipient is Raylene Bagg. <laughs> the Donna W. Castro RN Memorial Nursing Scholarship is awarded to five students who demonstrate academic excellence. And the first recipient is Patrick Kamara. <laughs> the second recipient is Samantha Estrella. The third recipient is Kara Wang. <laughs> the next recipient is Stephanie Parada. And last is Elizabeth Riendo. <laughs> the next scholarship is the Evelyn Pacheco Scholarship. Presenting this scholarship is Professor Pr Patricia Shriva, who would like to say a few words. Hi, good evening. I just like to take a couple of minutes each year when I give out this scholarship because I think it's important when there's a name attached to a scholarship that sometimes there's a story connected to that name. And so tonight, when Dr. Matthews mentioned that you want to be that nurse, I thought that's exactly who Evelyn Pacheco was. Evelyn Pacheco was that nurse. She was actually my mom, too. She was the kind of nurse who exemplified everything good in nursing. She was always the consummate professional. She was a nursing supervisor uh, for 34 years on the evening shift in Middleborough, Mass. at St. Luke's Hospital. And so she would be the person that would be at the emergency room, that would meet patients and their family. She would be the nurse who delivered the babies when the doctors didn't get there on time. But she was also the nurse who was there for all of her nurses that she supervised. She was there to give them flexible timing to help them finish their education. She was there always donating to them anonymously when they had their monetary struggles. And so when she passed away, it's been 33 years now that she passed away. Some of our graduates probably weren't even born 33 years ago. But because she was that nurse, her community never forgot her. I still go into the grocery stores, and I still meet people who say, I remember your mother. She was so And it, you know, it's been 30-something years, and people still remember her. Thank you. 
So I say to all of you graduates, bring your heart into your practice. Always be a professional, always be caring. Care about the people that you work with, the people that you care for, and their families, and people will remember you. So tonight, it is my honor and my privilege to be able to give the Evelyn Pacheco Memorial Scholarship to Max Cohort. Thank you. The next scholarship is the John A. and Eileen F. Carr and Catherine V. Whalen Scholarship. And this scholarship is awarded to two students who demonstrate academic excellence and achievement. The first student, Jade Cabral, was unable to attend, so I'm happy to accept this on her behalf. The second student recipient is Kimberly Shea. The next scholarship is the Lucy Rose Memorial Nursing Scholarship, and the student recipient is Elizabeth Hicks. <laughs> the next scholarship is the Marguerite G. Condon Memorial Nursing Scholarship. And this scholarship is awarded to Amanda Silva. The next scholarship is the Marie Marshall Nursing Scholarship. And I'd like to acknowledge um, Dr. Marie Marshall if she's in the audience. Is she here? I don't see her. Dr. Marshall is Professor Emerita and also Program Director of the former Program Director of the Nursing Program. And her scholarship is awarded to Marlene Vassallo. The next scholarship is the Marie B. Malouf Memorial Scholarship, and this scholarship is awarded to two students who demonstrate academic excellence and achievement in their first year. And the first recipient is Stephanie Fontaine. The next scholarship recipient is Brittany Pothier. The next scholarship is the Mullins Family Nursing Scholarship. To present this scholarship is Mr. James Mullen. Mr. Mullins would like to say a few words. J.D. Ann Melendez. J.D. Ann Melendez, yes. Yeah. Ah. Mm. Thank you, Roger. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Sure. The mic is all yours. Thank you. <laughs> I come from a family of nurses. I have uh, th three sisters who are nurses, and one of my daughters is a nurse. And, uh, my daughter works for GE out in the uh, uh, up west, the place, the big, uh, big factory. I gotta tell you this story. Uh, one, one week at a time. 
someone had to take the midnight, or they all knew that they all had to take the midnight shift because they had to respond to a, a call into this department on a piece of equipment that G had made anywhere in the world. So these particular nurses had to be well, well dressed and all this bought equipment. So one morning, about three o'clock in the morning, they got a call from India, and the man could hardly speak English. He said, the GE, the GE. My daughter said, yes, this is the GE. You have a problem. Yes, a big problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. What can we do? What can we do? She will tell me, what is it? She said, well, a big operation going on. Big operation going on. Now, in the middle of operation, something stopped. Something stopped. She said, well, what was it that stopped? She said, well, that's a big, that big piece of equipment. They stopped. They stopped. She said, what do you, what, what's going on? She said, the operation going on in the room, and, 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 and it stopped. She said, what was it? Well, I don't know. She said, was it a, a, a piece, you're working on a, a custom, on a body, on a person? No, no, in the room, in the room, somebody in the room. She said, well, what could it be? She said, could it be the air conditioning? Ah, ah, it's get hot, get hot, very hot. She said, do you know where to uh, go behind the equipment and push the reset button? <laughs> and the man said, reset button? What, what reset button? She said, go to the back of the equipment, it's a panel, and on it, it says, reset button, push it. Thank you very much. And he brought back in, everything, okay, it's right. Thank you very much for being here. So the nurses have to know the equipment, they have to know everything about what you do. And I want to tell you, you, you young ladies, the world is your oyster. The people out there are crying for educated nurses. And you can pick any kind of a uh, hospital you want. You'll never be out of work. And the other thing, one of my sisters, I think I told you this last story last year, she went in the Air Force. And she, you could pick your, I think, at the time, when you were in the Air Force, you could get your first uniform was free, and you could pick any base you wanted to serve. So it was in the winter. So she decided she wanted to go down to Texas. Well, down in Texas, she met a lieutenant colonel. And to make a long story short, she ended up in, she worked all over the world. They worked in, she, her husband was an educator in, uh, in Arkansas, and he was, uh, it is some kind of secret of product that the Air Force had. They lived in Germany, they lived in Greece, they lived in uh, Australia, they lived in Japan, they lived in England, they traveled the whole world. And to boot, she ended up with a lieutenant colonel and three, five kids. Thank you, Mr. Mullins. <laughs> the next scholarship is the Richard and Doris Cork Nursing Scholarship. Is Mr. Cork present? I'd like to acknowledge him if he's here. I'd like to um, um, present this scholarship on his behalf to Carolina Bullhos. The next scholarship is the Ruth E. Hurley Nursing Award. I'd like to acknowledge Ruth Hurley in the audience again. She served as the program director of the nursing department before her retirement, and I'm proud to say that she did pin me 36 years ago. The following recipient of this scholarship, it's a surprise. The student was chosen by second year faculty and is awarded to a student graduating from the nursing program who demonstrated superior clinical competence. And this student is Jessica Louise. Two more scholarships left. The next one is the Truesdale Hospital Nurses Alumni Association Scholarship. Is Diane Lavoie in the audience? I'd like to acknowledge her. 
Hi, thank you, as a scholarship donor. And this scholarship is awarded to Autumn Briggs. And the final scholarship is the Union Hospital School of Nursing Alumni Scholarship. The student recipient was chosen by second year faculty and given to the student in their second year of the nursing program who demonstrated outstanding clinical skills. And the student recipient is Peter Bertelli. Thank you very much and congratulations to all. Thank you, Dr. Plant. At this time, we invite Professor Stephen Alves, Nursing Department Chair, and Professor Nancy Moxon, Faculty Pinning Chair's Person, to come forward to facilitate the pinning of the graduates. With the assistance of Professor Kathleen Pilot for the reading of the names and President Spraga for congratulating the graduates. Josiah Monero. <laughs> Peter Batelli. <laughs> Joshua True. Rachel Baxter. <laughs> Serena Gunderson. <laughs> Jessica Henriques. Anna Abdel Kader. <laughs> Ola Dani Abendola. Nicole Aguiar. <laughs> Heather Andrade. Courtney Arnold. <laughs> Holly Baptista. <laughs> Jessica Barboza. Jessica Balazer. <laughs> Haley Bellevue. Ashley 
Ashley Blanchard. Melissa Borges. Sharon Batello, excuse me. Derek Booten. Richard Brow. <laughs> Tough act to follow. <laughs> Samantha Brush. <laughs> Magali Callier. <laughs> Rhonda Camara. Taylor Carullo. <laughs> Julia Catalfomo. <laughs> Nicholas Satola. Odessa Condi. <laughs> Our valedictorian, Tracy Cooley. <laughs> Lindsay Cadero. <laughs> Nathan DeAndre. Jill De Julio. <laughs> Alyssa DeMello. Raffaele D'Souza. <laughs> Alyssa Estrella. Jennifer Gonzalez. Okay. 
Teresa Green. Ryan Gregg. Yeah. Tracy Guerrero. Lori Kilkis. <laughs> Jessica Luang. <laughs> Jessica Louise. Eveline McFarlane. <laughs> Ashley Medeiros. <laughs> Carrie Medeiros. Stephanie Melio. <laughs> Nicole Mello. Ivana Mills. <laughs> Niall Miranda. <laughs> Rosa Mitchell. Hunter Parent Wetmore. <laughs> Kevin Patricio. <laughs> Sandra Petrino. Priscilla Pont. <laughs> Cheyenne Rigo. Nicole Rowley. <laughs> Desiree Santos.
Rebecca Santos. Amanda Schnorbus. <laughs> Tara Silva. Tania Silva. <laughs> Gabriella Silvera. <laughs> Katrina Simmons. Maxi Saravo. <laughs> Christine Soares. <laughs> Keith Souza. Jessica Souza. Danielle Stilly. Rachel Thomas. Alicia Turcott. <laughs> Lisa Almschneider. <laughs> Kathy Ann Vega. Drew Vickers. <laughs> Jamie Webb. <laughs> Joshua Wood. Please join me in congratulating the BCC nursing class of 2017.
The candlelight pledge is a traditional oath recited by new nurses commemorating Florence Nightingale's history of providing care to wounded soldiers by candlelight. I now invite Professor Patricia Shriver and Dr. Donna Munsey to lead us in the candlelight pledge. I pledge myself in the presence of the assembly to practice my profession faithfully. I will devote myself to the welfare of those entrusted to my care, considering each individual as deserving my respect, dignity, and the best care I can give. I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in my practice. I will never knowingly misuse or discredit my profession, but always endeavor to elevate its standards. Thank you, Professor Shriver and Professor Munsey. I would now like to deliver a message to the students, family, faculty, and friends. I would like to take the time to honor and appreciate every single individual up here beside me tonight during this proud ceremony. With the sincerest and most heartfelt emotion, I can proudly recite that these individuals are some of the most capable, compassionate, and good-hearted members of our community that it could ever have been my pleasure to know. Entering into this program, we were lost. Time and time again, questioning ourselves with the doubtful thoughts of, do I have what it takes? What will the test be like? How am I gonna manage my time and my life outside of this journey? You have all persevered through even the most difficult endeavors that life could have possibly thrown your way throughout this powerful journey. You have all made me so extremely proud. You have now officially proven to your friends, your family, and most importantly to yourselves that you hold the capacity to mold your own future for the better. Throughout, we have struggled, whether it be in the form of financial hardship, dissolution of long-lived relationships, or even for some, the loss of a loved one. But you're still here today to redeem that these sacrifices were not made in vain. To demonstrate that we are the intelligent, versatile, and strong-willed lifelong learners with a pursuit of happiness and a drive to change the lives of others around us. In the time that I've spent with the members of your family here on this stage with me tonight, I can say that every single time, without a doubt, I would look them in the eyes and I would tell myself with a goofy, wholehearted smile on my face that <laughs> I cannot wait to see you guys succeed. And I am so proud of each and every one of you. And here we are. <laughs> With your relentless support, <laughs> with your relentless support, your continuous guidance, and calming reassurance that our countless hours spent in the books and dedicated, <laughs> and dedicated to our work were not simply wasted efforts. <laughs> you helped us to develop into these wonderfully brilliant individuals with a sense of excitement for what lies ahead. To you, the family, friends, and loved ones here tonight, we display our utmost gratitude and a genuine thanks as we could not have done this without you. 
if you could only feel the level of appreciation that these men and women have for you just for being a part of their lives, then you too could understand the extreme joy that this night has brought into their hearts. As a child, just as many other children, I had these wild and adventurous dreams set before me. Consistently, I would imagine the possibilities of a future where there were heroes and that they could perform these wonderful, miraculous tasks and save the lives of those in danger and in need. Countless hours spent daydreaming and wondering what it would be like to have these fantastic abilities and to work alongside other fantastic beings to truly make a difference in the lives of others. As time progressed, I felt as though my imagination was slowly fading in the harsh reality of life's continuous struggles presented on a day-to-day -day basis. Life is hard, and no one ever said that it would be easy, but we pull through regardless because we can't give up. As I witnessed my two older sisters continuously striving to do more and more in their lives to achieve their goals and to defy the odds against them, both developing into phenomenal RNs from this very same program, both here tonight with me, <laughs> I felt as though my desire to do more in my own life was beginning to rekindle within me. Every day, I provided myself with the same never-ending goal in my mind, to ensure that those around me were happy, safe, and secure. This very same attitude is what has drawn me, just as many others here on the stage with me, to this profession. On this night, a realization comes to my mind. I have fulfilled that very dream of mine as a child. On this night, we stand before you as a new generation of knowledgeable, competent, and talented future nurses. I stand here tonight beside heroes of various backgrounds, set forth to change the lives of others they meet throughout their magnificent journeys ahead and to instill hope in the communities they will serve. We've been given the tools and the empowerment to follow in the footsteps of these magnificent nurses before us, our proud and incredible instructors. We will bring forth your lessons into our future careers and demonstrate that we too can make a dramatic difference in the lives of others, for we are the BCC nursing class of 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Prior to closing our penning ceremony, we have a few people we would like to recognize on this special occasion. This is the last penning ceremony that President Sprago will be attending as president of Bristol Community College as he prepares for retirement after 17 long years of service to the college. We thank you, President Sprago, for this ongoing support of the health sciences and wish him the best in his retirement. Thank you, President Sprago. This is also the final pinning ceremony that Dean Patricia Dent will be attending as Dean of the Health Sciences as she prepares for retirement after nine years of service to the college. Dean Dent's presence will be missed within the division and we will remember her as being a key role in the continual development of our program. Thank you, Dean Dent. <laughs> Often we take for granted individuals who go above and beyond on a daily basis. I would like to take this moment to invite Charlotte Medeiros, our department's administrative assistant, to join us on the platform. Charlotte is truly an unsung hero as acts as the glue that keeps our administrators, faculty, and students together. We present these flowers in appreciation of her ongoing support of the department, and we thank you, Charlotte. I would now ask for professors Mickey Pike and Jacqueline Shook to join us on the platform.
Nursing is a unique program as it blends an intense academic workload with a rigorous clinical curriculum. Professors Pike and Shook coordinate and facilitate our clinical lab experiences. This past year, they've been critical in the opening and functioning of the new nursing arts lab in the new John J. Sprague building. <laughs> we thank you, Professors Pike and Shook. Lastly, I have a rather unique individual to recognize tonight. As you all know, the path of nursing school is challenging, to say the least. With the rigorous demands and required competencies, many students must struggle to meet success. Tonight, we recognize one student who represents true academic achievements, as she has been selected to represent both the nursing department as well as our <laughs> valedictorian for the college. Tracy Cooley, I invite you to come accept these flowers in appreciation of your hard work and achievement. <laughs> our last presentation is the class gift. Traditionally, the class officers provide a small gift as they move on to join the profession. We invite our graduates to find their gift under their chair. <laughs> We have elected to present you with customized DVDs of our pinning slideshow. The bonds that we make with each other during nursing school are both strong and unique to our discipline. We hope you may appreciate the memento in the future as you look back to where your career started. Congratulations, class of 2017. We call on Dr. Munsey to lead us with the benediction. Upon conclusion, we invite all guests to join us for refreshments in the lobby. We ask that all individuals in the audience please remain seated until the students have completed the recessional. Thank you for joining us on this special occasion. I am honored to offer the benediction for this year's graduating class and can think of no better way than expressing my sincere wishes for a very special group of people. First and one last time, I'd like to ask those students that work with me this semester, what's the bigger concept here? Safety. Safety, safety. exactly, <laughs> safety. One last lesson I have to put in. That's right, but tonight I want to use the term in a very special way. I want all of you to feel safe in the knowledge that you've chosen a worthy profession that is now going to enable you to touch the lives of more people than you could ever fully realize in ways you could ever fully grasp. Safety in the knowledge that despite the personal hardships that we all share as fellow humans, you have proven yourself capable of successfully completing a difficult course of study and consequently, safe in the knowledge that having done this, you can imagine any goal within your reach, which is the essential blessing that life offers and which BCC now invokes on your behalf as you go forward in your nursing career. We invoke the blessing of gratitude for Bristol Community College, for the tireless efforts of Vice President President Sprague and Vice President Satharis, Dean Dent, Nursing Program Director Steve Alves, and for all the dedicated faculty who strive on a daily basis to fulfill the mission of BCC. For the priceless support and significant sacrifice of family and friends without which the fulfillment of this dream would not have been possible. We invoke the blessing of inspired aspiration to dare to put your light on a stand and not under a bushel. To have the courage to dream big and push yourselves beyond your comfort zone. 
to have a vision of an even greater future to pursue, to focus mindfully on the present without being bullied by regrets of the past or fears of the future, and to have the fortitude to overcome the inevitable hardships that life puts between us and the goals we set. Lastly, and especially, we invoke the blessing of life's most essential entities, that of faith to overcome doubt, that of hope to overcome discouragement, and that of love to overcome suffering and sustain a spirit of selfless giving. Graduates, you've lit the lamp. Don't hide it under a bushel. <laughs> Go in peace. Thank you. Grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make.